Golf Talk Canada presented by Acura. Tuesdays at 2.30 on TSN. The Swedes survived a first game thriller. Chip it on the score! It's a power play goal to tie the game at five. Scoring with less than a minute in regulation, then knocking off the host checks in a shootout. Today, they'll face a determined Austrian team that's still on a high after earning one of the biggest wins in their history in a shootout over the Swiss. After crushing Norway in their opener. Puts it back to the line, slap shot, score! The Russians have run their tournament winning streak to 11. And it would be a huge upset if Slovenia denies the Russian juggernaut an even dozen today. The World Hockey Championship continues first Sunday in May. Now. Busy day at the World's Day 3, Austria, Sweden, at the O2 Arena in Prague, Czech Republic, and over in Ostrava in the Czech Republic, it is Russia, Slovenia. Michael Raffel, big goal for Austria yesterday, Philip Forsberg, Team Sweden in their yellow Trey Kroner uniforms. And of course, Russia and Slovenia, Evgeny Malkin back in the lineup for Russia. And Andrzej Kopitar, the king of the kings for Slovenia on the ice. So we've got a lot of stars on the ice bright and early this morning. Hi, everybody. Rod Black with you. Bob Airy with you, a former Stanley Cup champion, former world champion as well. <laughs> Canada back on the ice this morning as well. Yes, they are. Uh, after a, an impressive performance in their first game, Rod, Canada gets the nod here again. But... Uh, what really a lot of stars are going to shine here Malkin gets his first crack at the world championships he's been dominant we got great play throughout the day great play i tell you what yesterday was outstanding we had a lot of close <laughs> games a couple of shootouts a one goal games we've got four games for you today picture in picture is a good thing today and enjoy your couch lots of hockey austria sweden russia slovenia doubleheader going on this morning canada germany at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific time, that game solo across the TSN network, and then Denmark, Finland later today, 2 o'clock Eastern. And to set up Austria and Sweden, let's go to Prague. Here's Gord Miller and Ray Ferraro. Well, normally Detroit losing in the early rounds of the playoffs is good news for Team Sweden. They get lots of Red Wings, but this year they get none. They do get help, though, from Nashville as two of their players arrive in the weekend. Yeah, certainly they had expected and hoped for Nick Cronball or maybe Gustav Nyquist from the Detroit Red Wings, Henrik Zetterberg perhaps, but none of them are going to be able to participate. So Philip Forsberg and Matthias Ekholm adds on the first day of the tournament become really important for, for Sweden. Now this is a Swedish team that doesn't look like they're going to score very easily, although they got a boatload against the Czechs the other night. They're not really strong down the middle, so they're going to need a push from Forsberg on the wing and their defense. They have 43 goals in the National Hockey League from their blue line, led by 23, of course, from Oliver ekman Larson. But it's Ekholm who might be the surprise player from the blue line for Sweden. Up into the rush, really good skater. Austria hasn't had a lot of success against Sweden lately in this tournament. Two wins for the Austrians, though, in 1931 and 1947. 1947. You remember that one? No. Oh, no. They won a bronze medal that year, and Austria hasn't been in the top pool very often, but a huge win over the Swiss. But let's talk about the Swedes for a moment. Gold medalists a couple of years ago, and they are led by a defenseman. They are. Yeah, this, this guy is the best defenseman that nobody knows about. He's the best defenseman in this tournament in Arizona, Oliver ekman Larson. This guy, 10 power play goals on the season, 23 to match his number. Finishes it in the shootout for the Swedes in game one. And this guy right right now is the premier defense for the National Hockey League. He plays out west. He's quietly becoming a star in the National Hockey League and the best, I think, Rod, in the world. These are two teams. Maybe they're destined for a shootout in this one because the Swedes beat the Czech Republic in a shootout. And yesterday, Austria, Konstantin Kamarik. Look at that goal. And then Austria hangs on for one of their biggest wins ever in a shootout, 4-3 over Switzerland. It's exciting. All these points, uh, the Swiss, uh, they've been good in this tournament over the last couple of years, so they go down to the Austrians, and uh, just goes to show you that uh, the, the playing field is being uh, leveled in many of these countries. 
And get your points when you can early in the tournament. <laughs> Whether it's in a shootout, it's a three-point tournament, remember, for a win. You get two with an overtime win and a shootout win. And the one point, if you get into overtime, so, so far, Pool A, again, Canada playing Germany later today. Canada with the win. The Czech Republic with the win and an overtime loss. And over in Pool B... The United States, 2-0, and oh, six points so far. Russia looking to join them today against Slovenia. And with more on that game, let's go to Ostrava and join Dennis Bayak and Shane Knighty. On the injury front for Russia, Danny Zarapov, who had a goal and two assists in their opener, is out for the tournament. Viktor Tikhanov was supposed to be a scratch. He is in the lineup. And Shane, they've added some well-known names from the National Hockey League. Well, for Russia, a team that already has a lot of offensive power, they've added Nikolai Kuleman from the New York Islanders, Vladimir Tarasenko from the St. Louis Blues, and Evgeny Malkin, who was here last game but did not play, he was in the building, will be in the lineup tonight from the Pittsburgh Penguins. So, yes, Russia does have that star power up front. Six goals in the opener and they've added more offense. As far as Slovenia is concerned, Andrzej Kopitar of the Los Angeles Kings is their star player and Jan Mershak who played 42 games for the Detroit Red Wings. But alas, Evgeny Malkin has arrived. The prodigal son for Russia has returned and you get to see him every single day in the National Hockey League. Well, I get to see him there. I get to see him on the world stage as well as we saw him and Russia win that gold medal last year. He was dominant, the best player in the world championships, maybe in the world. Look at this kind of slick move. You talk about a guy that's patient on the big ice, can play with this Russian style. Uh, incredible stuff. He was hampered by an ankle injury late in the season for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Didn't score in his last eight in the regular season, six in the playoffs. So you got Malkin in Russia, you got Crosby on Canada. Pretty exciting. Yeah, they might collide at some point, by the way. Uh, also, looking forward to watching Tarasenko today uh, for Team Russia. So Russia, Slovenia, and Austria and Sweden, a doubleheader to get it kicked off on day three at the World Hockey Championship. Boy, it's a tough ticket in Czech Republic, too. The fans have been great, and, and they've been um, wearing rather interesting stuff. <laughs> the 2015 IIHF World Hockey Championship from Prague and Ostrava, Czech Republic is brought to you by RBC. Proud to support hockey in Canada to help more kids reach their someday. By Imperial Oil. The Esso brand is the proud sponsor of Hockey Canada and Team Canada. By Nike, official gear of Canada's national hockey teams. And by TELUS, the biggest fans of Canada's biggest game. The 2015 IIHF World Hockey Championship from Prague and Ostrava, Czech Republic is brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Starting, starting goaltenders for Sweden, Anders Nielsen from Bars Kassana, the KHL gets the nod, and for Austria, Rene Sweat. No sweat. No sweat. Should be oh, a good no, there will be sweat. <laughs> Barulin, he gets the nod for Slovenia, and Grasnar for the Russians, and this will be a good one here. And boy, with Malkin and Tarasenko, that's a lot of firepower. Starting goalies brought to you by Chevrolet. Find new roads. Don't forget, less than four hours from now, Canada takes on Germany. The Germans coming off a slim win yesterday. Canada coming off a big win over Latvia. So second games for both at 10 a.m. Eastern time. All the talk surrounding Sidney Crosby, of course, and that line, Nathan McKinnon and Jason Spezza. Let's not forget about probably the most experienced line is also one of the youngest lines. Yeah, they got this line uh, centered with Matt Duchesne and you got Hall and Eberle. And these guys have 60 games of world championship experience between the three of them. They picked up 38 points over those 60 games. They did combine for one goal, the Duchesne goal in game one. So uh, what, what you see right now is Canada, with a lot of depth. You talk about centers being strong and they have a lot of depth down the middle. Claude Giroux, you can throw him into the mix. Sidney Crosby, and this is where they're gonna get it done ultimately, I believe. Everybody's talking about this team being explosive. We'll see against a German team that plays a lot of defense. They're not gonna dazzle you with a lot of offensive no. firepower. No, they're not. Uh, they're gonna pack the house. They're gonna try to, to pack the blue lines and Canada's just gonna have to keep coming and coming. We'll talk more about that game throughout this morning. Marty Jones will start in net for Team Canada later today, but 
When we come back, we'll send you to O2 Arena in Prague for Austria, Sweden, and Russia, Slovenia at Chess Arena in Ostrava. Enjoy this one. Day three at the Worlds begins. Start now. Good afternoon from Prague. Three games today in the big rink. And Austria coming off an incredible 4-3 win over Switzerland. Trailed that game three different times. Tied it up late and wanted a shootout to get an important two points. And now Austria takes on Sweden, which also won a shootout. And it's opened in a wild game, 6-5 over the host checks. A game that featured six goals in the third period. Sweden equalized that game on the power play with less than a minute to go. Both these teams scored tying goals with less than 60 seconds left of the clock to get to the shootout. Huge win yesterday for Austria. They, that bottom end of the tournament, trying to stay out of the relegation pool with picking up two points, although Germany got three yesterday. So this is a this is a place that they are very happy to be in as they open their second game against the Swedes. An issue with the timekeepers bench. The referees are Roman Goffman and Daniel Stricker from Switzerland. There's Dan Rattusti, the head coach for Austria. Rattusti from Ottawa was a gold medalist for Canada at the 1990 World Junior Championship and a silver medalist in the 92 Olympics. There's Par Marks who coached Sweden with a gold medal two years ago in this tournament and a silver medal at the 2014 Olympics. So the phone appears to be working. And we're all set to go, I believe. We are. Austria's been relegated the last five times it's appeared at the World Championship. The last ten years, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. They would love to, on their return, stay out of that relegation again. They were in the eighth pool for eight straight years from 98 to 05. And of course, Austria does have some NHL players. One here, of course, is Michael Roffel of the Philadelphia Flyers. He was signed as a free agent out of this tournament a couple of years ago. Two players not available. Thomas Vanek, of course, is still playing with the Minnesota Wild in the Stanley Cup playoffs. And Michael Grabner of the New York Islanders, who apparently is going to have to undergo surgery again this summer for chronic abdominal problems that have really hampered him the last few years. A career that looked like it was on the upswing after a 30-goal year a few years ago and just not been able to stay healthy. So Philip Forsberg, a late addition to the Swedish squad, plays it across to the captain, stopping Cronwall. Cronwall scored in that game against the Czechs on Friday. And he whistles that one high and wide. It's John Klingberg is back to pick it up. The sensational Dallas rookie for Louis Erickson. And back to Klingberg. I think one of the keys for the Swedes offensively in this tournament is going to be from their blue line. They had 43 NHL goals this past year, 23 from Oliver Ekman Larson, and 11 from Klingberg. And with some of the players they didn't get, most of them forwards. Oh, what a move by Louis Eriksson comes in and fires. And Rene Seta, the Austrian goaltender, makes a save. They're going to need a lot of punch from the blue line. This is a beautiful move from Louis Eriksson. Eriksson dodges around the defense and Zveta who did not play in the opener makes his first stop. He had a rather average year in Feigenfurt in the Austrian league. He had an 89% save percentage yet in the playoffs he played extremely well and he gets one of the spots on goal here for the Austrians and will try and follow a Terrific performance by Bernard Starkbaum, who had 34 stops yesterday. Sveta made one appearance at the World Championship in 2013. It was not a memorable one. He allowed three goals on eight shots in one period. And there's here's a, the crease violation. Well, there's the first one of the day. Yesterday, uh, Antoine Roussel made, made, set up a tent in the blue paint. and kept getting evicted. <laughs> yes, he did. Three times yesterday. The French had crease violations as they started to set up zone time. And well, one, he raised a very good scoring chance late in the game. They wound up losing two to one. We talked to a couple Canadian players, and they said playing Austria was a little bit of an eye opener for you, for them. They're, they're not very big, but they're quick, and they got on the puck really well. Here comes Thomas Raffel, the brother of Michael, the older brother. Their dad, one of the most accomplished players 
in Austrian hockey history. A longtime international player, over 100 games for the national team. Canada played Austria on Wednesday in Vienna, tune up for this tournament. One four to two, but as you said, the Canadians talked at length about how there wasn't a lot of room on the big ice. Victor Rask has that bounce away. Alexander Siad moves it ahead, but the puck is lost at the line. And I able to corral it with Simon Yalmerson for the Swedes. Elias Lindholm throws it ahead for Yalmerson trying to reach for it. And that was knocked away from him. Now Siad chips it ahead. Picked up by Nicholas Petrick. Back court for Sweden is Jonas Analov, plays for Modo in the Swedish Hockey League, fires it down, and that's icing against Sweden. Two and a half into the first period. Just watching Austria play, we know the Swedes are going to be organized, they always are. But Austria does support the puck well, they get from one side of the ice across pretty quickly, and they're going to challenge you with their speed. They're not going to be able to cycle the puck and hold it below the goal line. They're going to have to get some stuff done off the rush. Pretty good crowd here just after noon on a Sunday afternoon. A beautiful day here in Prague. Upper deck almost completely full. And great attendance here for the non-check games. Obviously the check games are filled with capacity. With How loud is it going to be in here against Canada tomorrow night? This place literally shakes when they start jumping up and down as they've done in both the first two nights. Patrick Peter looks down to Thomas Hunterfund and Hunterfund plays it back down. Loose in the corner for Peter that bounced away from him. Raphael Rotter reaching for it as well and now moved ahead to Rask. Victor Rask who scored in that game against the Czechs as well. What a goal he scored there. In front of the net, a spin and tap into the net, all in one motion. Beautiful play. So while these teams had the same result in their first game, very different ways, the Austrians trailed the whole night. The Swedes led for almost the entire game until the Czechs took a late lead for about two minutes in the third period. But the Austrians trailed three separate times. 1-0, 2-1, 3-2. And got it to 3-3. And were they, were they excited with their result yesterday? Oh, that's in, a, well, as you said, that's huge for them. And particular since this bouncing up and down, you know, you look through their roster, they have so many players playing in their very first World Championship. And one of the reasons is they haven't played for a couple of years, and then it was a couple of years before that. So they're inexperienced. They're small, but they're really quick. And yesterday's result was a real shot in the arm for them. Another big boost to Austrian hockey was qualifying for Sochi. And they did it at the expense of Germany, which makes it even sweeter for the Austrians as Herberger steps into Ericsson. The play was called as the puck was played with a high stick. No, it's going to be a high stick. Penalty. penalty, pardon me. And it's going to be it's Forsberg. Yeah. When he was dumping the puck, and you see Forsberg's got a bemused look on his face. As he's dumping the puck in, the stick follows through and Watch the Austrian player shoot Chumnig in the in the face, and that's a penalty in international hockey. In the National Hockey League, the follow-through of a shot or a pass or a face-off is not a high sticking penalty. But under IHF rules, any time your stick makes contact, it can be called high sticking. They're just showing Forsberg on the big clock. He's still shaking his head. Welcome back to IHF rules, Philip. This isn't the NHL anymore. And the Austrians 0 for 2 in the power play yesterday. Moving across and a drive right on goal by Patrick Peter, kicked away by Andres Nilsson, the Swedish starting goaltender who plays for Kazan of the KHL. Nilsson, who was a New York Islander draft choice, makes his first good stop here, a pad stop. The one timer from Patrick Peter is, is a good one. There's no traffic in front, but Nilsson makes the stop. Nilsson played 23 games for the Islanders over two years, 19. The year before last, a save percentage of 898 just never got himself established in the Islander goal. They went a different direction with free agency. And some trades. Got Yaroslav Halak and then picked up Michael Neubert from Buffalo. About 25 years old and had a real good year in, in the KHL. And you never know. Goaltenders show up at various times in their 
Ask Devin Dubnik. He can turn in a hurry. And he's six foot five. Yep. That's not a bad thing. Herberger sends it down and Nelson hangs on to that. In the playoffs in the KHL, Nelson at a 947 save percentage. There's Michael Raffle, who, as you mentioned, Gord, the Flyers drafted, or rather signed a couple of years ago out of the out of this tournament. And nine goals in his rookie year, 21 goals this past year. Played a lot of the year with, with Claude Giroux and, and Jakob Voracek. Hallestrang moves up now for the Austrians. Try to throw that pass in front, blocked by Matthias Ekholm. Now played back to the point to Heinrich. Long shot goes off the leg of Joel Lundqvist. And Dominic Heinrich got that away. Now at the side of the goal, played back by Thomas Raffel. And that pass is intercepted, picked off by Matthias Schogren. It was Schogren who scored the tying goal on the power play against the Czechs late in the first in the third period. And now Raffel has that knocked away. As Oscar Kleffbaum, the defenseman, was up first for the Swedes. Lead pass goes to Manuel Latusa. And Latusa finds Konstantin Komarek. Komarek has a goal in the tournament, although he has not scored during play. Under IHF rules, if you score the shootout winner, you get credit for a goal. He didn't have a shot on goal in the 65 minutes of play. His only shot was in the shootout. It's pretty tough not to get a shot in the shootout. But he scored the only goal of the shootout yesterday. So if you score the shootout but it's not the winner, you don't get credit for a goal. Or a shot. <laughs> right. Which makes total sense. It has taken some navigation or learning curve for me of the navigation of the international websites to figure out the stats sometimes. There is some work to this. Yes, it like, can be a little convoluted. It's, it's certainly different than, than home. The tournament's different. The rules are different. They calculate power plays based on time on the power play as opposed to opportunities, which in a way makes more sense. A 10-second power play counts the same as a two-minute power play in the NHL. And, and for example, the, the Czechs have given up three power play goals. They've only been shorthanded four minutes. Forsberg fires it. That goes wide of the goal. Now moved in by Stefan Cronwall. And Cronwall chases his own rebound. Feeds it back for Klingberg. John Klingberg in, shoots it off a leg and wide. Now Klingberg back on it. Feeds it back in front. Oscar Moore with a shot and Sveta knocks that away. And now the puck play to the high stick. And the faceoff will come outside when we come back. Back in Prague later today in this arena at 10.15 Eastern Time. Canada will face Germany tonight. France will play Switzerland right now in Ostrava. Russia is playing Slovenia later on today. Belarus against Slovakia. Evgeny Malkin making his yeah. debut of the tournament for the Russians today. Vladimir Tarasenko on the way. The Russian team got a lot better, didn't they? Didn't they ever? Russia, of course, won the event last year. Alexander Ovechkin did make the playoffs in Washington and lit up the tournament. He's doing a pretty good job in the playoffs yeah. this year. Wow. 1-1 with the Rangers. Now a centering pass just missed Raphael Rotter there. Rotter plays for Vienna in the Austrian League. They lost the league championship series to Salzburg, coached by Dan Matucci, the coach of this Austrian national team. Salzburg went 12-1 in the Austrian playoff. Thomas Hookerfoot. Moves it in behind the Swedish goal. Left there by Nilsson. Here's Oliver Ekman Larson, 23 goals, lead all NHL defenseman this year. Finds Louis Aronson with it, drops it back, and a quick shot taken there by Jochen Lindstrom, and that goes wide. Patrick Peter through the middle, trying to find Brian Lebler. He's got Canadian roots, He's got dual citizenship, born in Canada. His dad, a longtime Austrian player. His dad, Eddie's fourth all time. It's scoring for the Austrian national team and Brian played for Penticton in the BC Junior League in four years for Red Barons in the University of Michigan. A big strong kid scored a third period goal on a deflection yesterday. Had five shots on goal. 
35 goals this past year in 54 games in the Austrian league. Played for Linz in that league. Played for the Austrians in the Olympics last year in Sochi. One of the few Austrian players that is big, 6'3", about 225. Dominique Heinrich fires that down in the Swedish zone. Yalmerson back for it. And Simon Yalmerson looks ahead for Elias Lindholm. That was poked away from him. As Alex Palastrang stayed with that. Seven members of that. Why would he say something when he's getting 100 million? I'd be quiet as a church mouse too. This is Sports Center. Pound for pound. It's one of the biggest nights in the history of boxing. Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao settle. Pulled the goaltender and it was a loose puck. He went towards the blue line, spun and just took a slap shot. Michael Raffle tipped it into the net with about 50 seconds left to send that game to overtime. Now a chance and that's a tip over the glass and out of play. Face-off win for Austria, quick D to D pass and Mustin gets the shot from the blue line. He, like many of the players, is in his first world championship. Austria shooting sweep 4-3 in the early going. Michael Raffle kicking that face off. And pitched that wide of the goal. In the corner is Florian Mulstein. Now played back at the point. And that shot from Herberger got blocked. Another chance of walking there was Levler. He fired it off a leg and wide. A couple of blocks to Joel Lundquist already here in the first period. Almost Lundquist can stop pucks, can't they? Yes, this is what I hear. His twin brother's quite good at it. In New yeah. York. Yeah, but his brother can't score. Joel had a goal in the first game. That's an excellent point by you. Joel's been a very accomplished player for the Swedish national team. Won a world championship with him in both 2006 and 2013. Always a, a depth player, a penalty killer, a, a checking type role for the for the Swedes. And as we mentioned earlier, with some of the players they didn't get. Some of these centermen are going to get pushed up the roster a little bit. They're going to ask a little more from them offensively. There's a face-off win by Lundqvist. Back for Clefbaum through the middle, and Lundqvist plays that quickly ahead. Jakob Josefsson of the New Jersey Devils flips it down. The Swedes' two NHL centermen are Anton Lander and Victor Rask, and both of them are pretty young. Now streaking in for Austria is Alexander Sian, who could make a burst or two. Finds a Mario Fisher in the corner. He played one shift yesterday. He's already been on the ice a couple of times today as the back-to-back the -back game will lead to a little bit longer bench for Dan Matuzny. Fisher with it. Works it back at the point. Mitterdorf with a long shot that was blocked and it bounces down. Lindstrom looks ahead, almost a breakaway pass for Moeller. And it's fired in by Florian Eber. First 10 minutes of the Austrians have been the better team here. And that was the scouting report from Team Canada. They, they felt like this was a very quick, very skilled team. Palestrang spins away from Lander. Drops it back to Heinrich. Dominique Heinrich winds his way across the line. Takes a quick shot. Nelson knocks it down. The puck squirts free again to Heinrich. Now scooped up by Lander. Forsberg comes in. That pass is knocked away. Again, a race for it. Back goes Eckholm, being shadowed there by Rotter. Louis Erickson chips it down. Back goes Florian Wolstein for it. Now picked up by Hook from Front. Hook from Front looking for that centering pass. Taken away by Daniel Wahini, who flips it back down to the Austrian zone. A lot of Austrians here, of course. Austria right next door to the Czech Republic, Vienna and Prague. Nice short train ride apart. Two of the most beautiful cities in Europe. Simon Yalmerson across the line, centers it for Rast, that got knocked away. There are two gloves and a stick on the ice in the corner. That's Martin Schumann, who took a high stick. He left most of his equipment on the ice. He's going down 
the tunnel to the dressing room to get some attention. Now a chance in front of Nielsen turns that away. And the late chance for Manuel Latusa of Salzburg. And there's a look at 25 year old Anders Nielsen. Five of the first eight shots, now six of the first nine shots by the Austrians. And Nielsen's had to make a couple of good stops. Two of them from one timers from the blue line, but Nielsen's been able to turn them aside. He's, you see how big he is. There's the, the backup tonight, Jonas Enroth. And Enroth hung in there in what turned into be a wild third period the other night. He gave up a couple of backhand goals that I wasn't crazy about. As the Czechs march their way back into the game, they little attention on the ice there as, as there was some blood on the ice after Schumnick took that high hit. Bob, and who's the other one? Bobek. Oh yeah. Come on, you gotta get these guys I, right. You, you are the mascot king. I, I defer to you in all matters mascot. I'll tell you when my five-year-old gets over here, he is gonna be pumped. A couple of years ago with the World Juniors, remember the milk cow guy? That was Vim Kokio. And uh, we have a Vim Kokio at home. He's a big mascot guy. Apparently it runs in the family. Yeah, with you. Aren't you TSN's mascot? I am. <laughs> You've been there so long. <laughs> Part of the furniture. <laughs> One goes for the defensive zone faceoff. I guess Michael Roffel. And reaching forward is Raphael Herberger. Couldn't quite get to it. And there's Daphne Cronwall. Up for Matthias Schogren. Rick Wine goes for Josefson. Jakob Josefson, a sharp angle shot. And the save is made by Sveta. Michael Roffel sides up that check, and now Cronwall with it. Joel Lundqvist loose in the corner, the puck rolling on him. Lundqvist centers it, Joel on the shot, and plays it back in behind the goal. Lundqvist chips it there, takes the return pass. A backdoor feed for Josephson, just missed. Now Josephson, back down to Lundqvist. Trying to center it, that pass was blocked by Eberer. Best shift of the first period here for the Swedes. Lebler trying to knock it out. And this time he does. John Klingberg fan of that clearing attempt. Scooped up by Eber. And the Austrians now changing as Heckman Larson goes around. And quickly finds Jimmy Erickson, the brother of Detroit's Jonathan Erickson, lost the puck. In comes Mario Fisher with a drive, and Anders Nilsson hangs on to that. No score here in the first period on day three of the World Hockey Championship. Back here at O2 Arena in Prague, the main venue for this World Hockey Championship, the medal round games, most of them at least will be played here. Ostrava, a couple hours to the east of here, is the other venue for this tournament. So we'll find Russia, the United States, Finland. back in action this afternoon here against Germany. And the Lions with warning and warning about face-off violation. Lindstrom lost the puck. Heinrich got to wait for teammates to get back on side. Didn't wait long enough. Rodder was trapped. Face off outside the Swedish blue line. It has been a tepid start for the Swedes who bolted out of the gate against the Czechs. Two quick goals against Czechs who seemed a little unsure as they opened up the tournament at home. Shots are seven to four, Austria. Heinrich plays that rink wide for Rotter. The Czechs played much better yesterday against Latvia. They were undone a little bit by the goaltender. Alexander Salak gave up two goals on the, on the six shots that he faced. Latvia only had four shots the rest of the game on Andre Pavlik, who came in in relief. Heinrich, long lead feed for Latou, so that misfires. And the faceoff will come back down to the Austrian zone. Really only one shift that's been in the Austrian end. It was two shifts ago when Joel Lundqvist's line was out. 
They cycled the puck well. And, but for the most part, the, the Swedes have been just kind of hanging out. They haven't really pushed the game. They haven't forechecked at all. Actually call offside, not icing. And Daniel Rahimi with it. Rahimi got spun around by Yarmir Yager in that game against the Texas. Yager emptied the trick bucket on him. Not the first, it won't be the last either. Oh, was he ever good yesterday? Six shots yesterday from Yager, a beautiful power play goal. Jakob Voracek had ten shots. Anilov finds Eriksson, Louis Eriksson in and stopped in the breakaway by Rene Sveta. So the best scoring chance for Sweden, the breakaway for Louis Eriksson. Now Forsberg picks it up, nifty move by Philip Forsberg. He shoots, scores! What a shot by Philip Forsberg, and Sweden has a 1-0 lead. Well, we saw Eriksson on the breakaway, turned aside by Sveta. And then a nifty bit of handwork by Philip Forsberg just inside the blue line to keep the puck alive. Here's the Ericsson breakaway. Sveta with the stop. Austria can't get the puck past the blue line. Look at this play by Forsberg. Flips it up in the air to himself as he turns around, and this is a rocket. Sveta loses the net a little bit. He's on the glove side, and you see Forsberg. He's going to pass it, but then drags it back and rockets this up over the shoulder of Sveta for his first goal of the tournament, and it is a beauty. Forsberg was the only rookie to lead a National Hockey League team in points this year. He scored 26 goals as well, one off the rookie lead, and was not a finalist for the Rookie of the Year award in one of the great years ever for NHL rookies. Well, he, he ended up getting nosed out, I believe, on the, on the finalist ballot by Mark Stone, who just almost in reverse of Forsberg had a fabulous year. Stone, from January 1st on, was virtually a point-a-game player. And the day that Forsberg found out he wasn't a rookie finalist, he scored a hat-trick in the playoffs against Chicago, a penalty coming out of Austria. It's a holding call with 5.47 to go, so Sweden will go back on the power play. Swedes got a couple of power play goals against the Czechs in the first game. Stefan Kronwall scored in the first period, and Matthias Sjogren scored in the last minute. There's the hold. Martin Schubig. Back after repairs. And Ted Richards is saying, who? Who? So now the Swedes will have a chance to extend their their lead. So that good start by the Austrians undone with the beautiful Forsberg goal. For Forsberg not on this unit. Klingberg and Ekman Larsen play the points. All right, but Larsen with a wrist shot kicked out by Sveta and the rebound cleared away by Nicholas Petrich. Seven six now the shots in favor of Austria. Drop pass goes to Jochen Lindstrom. Looks like Lindstrom's going to leave the National Hockey League for a third time. Ports are already signed with St. Petersburg of the KHL. Here's Ekman Larson. And that shot from Lindstrom pinballs around in front and cleared away by Dominic Heinrich for Austria. That play where Lindstrom shot it was the one that set up the tying goal, but he missed the shot <laughs> against the Czechs. Went right off the end of his stick to Sjogren, who chipped it through the legs of Salak for the tying goal in the last minute. Heck of a pass. Whether you meant to or not, here's Lindstrom, feeds it across. Ekman Larson in and shoots, and that goes off the foot of Patrick Petter over the glass and out. Before this tournament's over, this Swedish power play is going to cause some trouble for people. Ekman Larson started the power play on the right side, he ended up on the left side. Klingberg's all over the zone. Those two guys are going to be hard to get a handle on. So, the interesting game to play, Ray, is we saw Philadelphia sign Michael Roffel out of this tournament last year, or two years ago. They signed Belmar out of France last year. We'll look for players throughout the tournament that might stand out for the National Hockey League team, might take a try off. The first one that's poked out a little bit to me is McLaddle, the, the Czech defenseman. Hard shooting. Offensive D-man, here's Matthias Eckholm with it. Plays it back to Cronwell, across it goes. Forsberg a drive, and 
Sveta makes a stop on that. 40 seconds to go in the Swedish power play. Fronwall, Ekholm. And Ekholm swings it around looking for Louis Eriksson. Taken away from him by Florian Rostein. And Rostein plays it out. The pass goes to Lander, but the play is offside. The faceoff will come all the way back to the Swedish zone. Lander can't believe he's offside. Eh? I don't think he really was offside, but anyway, the whistle blew and they'll go back to the Swedish zone. There's the goal scorer, Philip Forsberg. And that was a beautiful play at the blue line. Pick up the puck, turn around, and as he's turning around, flip it up in the air so he can get himself squared up for the shot. Forsberg played three World Juniors for Sweden, the captain in his third year. And that was where he first caught your eye. Just, he does almost everything right positionally, but like a lot of the Swedes do, but there's there's really a, a gift there to be in the right place at the right time. He uses a long stick, he covers a lot of the ice. Really like him as a player. And he's gonna have a really good career. Seems to be a good fit in Nashville, doesn't he? Mike Ribeiro and he paired together right off the hop this year. Moeller plays it back to Lindstrom as the power play ends. In comes Moeller with a shot. He fired it wide out the other side. It goes. Moeller fires again. And this time Sveta makes the save. At the line, Klingberg across for Moeller who holds the line. Oscar Moeller back to Joachim Lindstrom. Three and a half to go in the opening period. John Klingberg. Winds his way in. Here comes Klingberg loose in front. Klingberg shoots. Sveta makes the stop, reaches up, and grabs the loose puck. Mitterdorfer, the defenseman, was tied up with Louis Erickson in front of the net. And as he gets tied up, this is the earlier chance you're going to see Klingberg come in from the blue line. There's the defenseman tied up, so Klingberg just walks through and makes a really nice shot through the defenseman's legs. Stop by Sveta and then able to snare the rebound before further damage. So a lot of fans in Dallas and Nashville were unhappy that Klingberg and Forsberg weren't Rookie of the Year finalists, but I guess the question is, who do you knock off the ballot? Klingberg had a great year in Dallas. 11 had, goals as a defenseman. Had a terrific year. Forsberg had a wonderful year. Here's a look at his goal again. It's, look, he pushes the Austrian player off the puck, circles with the puck, and then flips it to himself. Just well, because. Well, really, who doesn't do that? And and then rifles this up over the shoulder of the of the goaltender. And if you look at the finalists, we talked about Mark Stone, who was at a point a game since January 1st, and the Senators made that incredible run. Johnny Goudreau was over 60 points. Aaron Ekblad was it's, 21 and a half minutes, scored 12 goals as a 19-year-old. Marvelous year. And I, I mean, my gut feel is that Ekblad's probably going to win. I mean, just, in my opinion, he should win. 19-year-old defenseman, don't do that. I, he would get my vote if I had one. I think Goodrow might have a, a real strong chance at it. Well, he's got a better chance than Forsberg. <laughs> or Klingberg. There you go. Or Mike Hoffman, who led all rookies with 27 goals. What a rookie class. Michael Roffel for Heinrich. To Lebler, Lebler centers it. Raffle could get a shot away. But Lebler towers over his line mate. Dominic Henrik is 168 pounds. He's listed at 5'9. Not a chance. No chance. That's a that's a bad net for conversion there. I've cheated that height chart before. And, I, <laughs> and you're still doing it today. Oh no, no, no. You no are anymore. Busting in is Shogren with it. How tall are you, Ray? 6'1. 5'9. If you're 6'1, I'm in the NBA. Here's Clefbaum with it. But Lebler outweighs the centerman by a good 50 pounds. There's Lundquist flipping it ahead. And Spencer just one hands that puck away. Yosis is back on it with 90 seconds to go in the first period. Now a chance in front. Home scores, or Kleffbaum rather scores on the centering pass. Oscar Kleffbaum had pitched up, and Sweet takes a 2 0 lead. We've talked about the the offense from the Swedish blue line, and Kleffbaum had two goals in 60 games in Edmonton this year, and really started to get some traction towards the second half of the year. But this play starts when Sveta, the goaltender, 
One hands the puck kind of haphazardly into the corner. That keeps the cycle alive. Ludquist just blows the Austrian defenseman off the puck behind the net. That's a really good forecheck. And then Shogren, who had the game-tying goal the other night against the Czechs, finds Kleffbaum in from the point, and the Swedes lead 2-0. So two goals on nine shots for Sweden. Really strong play by Lundqvist to keep that, that four check moving. Now Forsberg swings up rink wide for Lander. Anton Lander with a shot, spent on the save and the rebound, squirted free for a moment. Played away by Florian Ebera. Thomas Raffle works his way in. Under a minute to go now in the opening period. Thomas Raffle battling for him, but Klingberg picks it out. Finds Lander, drops it back for Forsberg. Philip Forsberg in, shoots, Feta makes the save. Now it goes Louis Erickson, hit it to Lander, shoots, scores! Anton Lander on the feed from Louis Erickson, and it's 3 nothing sweet. Beautiful patience from, from Lander, so back-to-back -back goals by Edmonton Oilers, Clefbaum and then Lander, 41 seconds apart. And again, this goal starts below the goal line. Initial shot by Forsberg, he keeps the cycle going. And then Erickson jumps on the loose puck to Lander, who's got too much time in front of the Austrian goal. Good Forsberg keep the play alive. Lander gets to the front of the net, and Erickson's pass is right on the tape. And terrific patience by Anton Lander to make it 3 0. Goal and an assist for Philip Forsberg here in the first period. And a slumbering start for the Swedes has been put to rest. It's they, woke, nothing. they woke up pretty quick here late in the period. They scored three times in the last six and a half minutes. Now Oscar Moeller with a centering pass and fire running goal by Jimmy Erickson. Palestrand. The puck to Ekholm. Ten seconds to go in the period. Ekholm feeds it back. It's another drive by Kleffbaum. That was blocked. And the puck in the corner. Back to Kleffbaum. As time expires here in the first period, Sweden with a late burst takes a 3 0 lead after the first period on a Sunday afternoon in Prague. What happened? Do not forget Canada, Germany, 10 a.m. Eastern, a few hours from now, 7 a.m. Pacific. Game two for them at the World. Denmark and Finland wraps it up today. Day three at the World Hockey Championship. One period down in Prague. We join you between periods here as Sweden has taken it to Austria in this game. Austria actually came out flying, outshot the Swedes 7-4, to four, and then... The Trey Kroner took over. Yeah, they did. They got the last eight shots of the period. Did Sweden. They've been doing it with solid defense and good offense. Anders Nielsen providing the defense. Six foot five, the former New York Islander playing the KHL this year was solid early in that hockey game against Austria. And he had to be. And he was solid. And that allowed Sweden to get their footing and take it offensively. What a year Philip Forsberg had in the NHL as a rookie. He's not even nominated for one of the rookies no. of the year. But I tell you what, this guy has got some mitts. Yeah, he's got mitts, but he can play defense mm -hmm. as well, Rod. And that's what really presses me. You know, you go to Nashville, you, you got watch guys like Mike Fisher, you play good defense, and he seals his man off here. Look at the hands. Well, flick it up in the air, little curl and drag around the stick. Philip Forsberg, who had a hat trick in this year's Stanley Cup playoffs, really a one man wrecking crew right here. You gotta love to see that kind of stuff, and that just got things going offensively. They were able to score a couple more 3 nothing Sweden. Does good things in those yellow uniforms, I guess. Uh, let's talk about Russia and Slovenia. Also 3 nothing that game going on in the second period right now. And Russia dominant right from the beginning in this game, that game in Ostrava. Yeah, well, they added Malkin to the lineup. They had Kumulin, uh, Kuliman, excuse me, Tarasenko comes into the lineup. Do they need all this power? Russia, 
Well, they're clones, they though. Do. Look at them. They're clones. Well, I, but watch them go now. It's no, not a lot of that weaving, this and that. It's straight line, speed hockey. You know, these guys have been North Americanized a little bit. and But Slovenia, they don't mind. We're going to play that, too. We're going to bring our defense up. We don't care. We don't care about the back door. We're just going to go back and forth with you because that's the kind of hockey we're going to beat you with. No, it's not going to work, Rod. You know, this doesn't work. They're not going to that outside shot's not good. Here goes Russia. There's Kovalchuk, one of the great players ever to get behind defense. When he's gone, you he's gone. I'm a cherry picker, if you yeah, like. Yeah, he's a cherry picker. He's a little bit of a cheater, but he can score goals, can oh, yeah. he? He's got nine goals in the last ten. World Championships and the captain, Kovalchuk, is flying. We've got a couple of 3 0 games going on uh, Russia and Slovenia in Ostrava. We'll send you back to Gordon Ray in Prague, a 3 0 Sweden after one. Day three at the Worlds continues. Here's your Lundquist saying his signs on a third gold medal at the World Championship. Team Sweden. At Champion in 2013, finished with a bronze medal last year, beating the Czechs for third place in Minsk. And Rene Svete faced nine consecutive shots from Sweden in the later stages of that third, his first period rather, as the Swedes took over in the latter part of the opening period. A good start for Austria, just dissipated in the last six and a half minutes. The Swedes scored three. A commanding 3 0 lead after it, the first. Isn't that the difference, though, we see when a, there's a, a mismatch of talent that a five minute window becomes the difference in the game? Right, and if the while the underdog team is playing well, if they don't take advantage of it, it's really tough to hang in. And the Swedes smell a little blood there at the end of the period, and bang, bang, bang after the Forsberg goal, and it's 3 0. Eric's trying to, trying to chip that ahead. It's held by the Austrians. Raphael Rotter with it. Rotter looking for that return pass in the corner for Manuel Geyer. And that's chipped out by Jokob Lindstrom. Oliver Ekman Larson snaps that pass across for Jimmy Eric. So that's a hundred foot pass on the international ice surface. Ekman Larson played eight minutes and 12 seconds in that first period. It looks like he could have played about five minutes more. Yeah, pretty casual play for him then. And Tom Lander snaps it rink wide. That pass just missed Louis Erickson. Here's Cronwell with it. To Erickson. Patrick Pitter stays with him. And Florian Eber. Up ahead for Michael Roffel. That pass was knocked away. In comes Philip Forsberg with a drive and a save made by Sveta, who scoops the rebound away. Forsberg was a gold medal winner, as we mentioned, that 2012 Swedish World Junior Team in Alberta. Victor Rask was also part of that club. Oscar Kuffbaugh, Mika Zibanejad. It wasn't a bad team. If, if they would have lost the gold medal game, that would have been a shame. They would have totally dominated that game. The shame doesn't begin to touch that. That would have been an injustice. The shots were something like 40 to 14, weren't they, after two periods? Just just dominated the game. The, the Russians couldn't keep up. They couldn't get to the puck and it was a beautiful rush by Zibanejad and shot for the game-winning goal. In overtime and Sweden won its first World Junior since 1981 in that tournament and for Dan Ratushny in Austria a much different challenge. Austria's only been in the eighth pool of the World Junior level a couple of times in the last 25 years. A little bit of competition in that country for top athletes. Austria's a pretty good soccer country. Handball is very big in Austria, Germany, here in the Czech Republic. It's a very popular professional sport. Skiing, of course, in Austria is big too. And so when you, you look at a country like Austria, they, they have two points in the bank. And the games against Canada, the Czechs and the Swedes, while of course they're important, they're, they're not games that they're anticipating anyone's going to get points in that they're competing with to, to stay out of that relegation pool. Now a penalty coming to Rahimi. That'll be for a hit from behind as he took Komarek in. The officials are talking right now if it's so what the severity of the penalty will be. This could be one of the two and ten we've seen. It is. It is two and ten. One official's making the call, the other's going over to tell Paul Par Marks that it's two and ten, get somebody else in the box. Yeah. Roman 
Goffman with the call. So hitting the head and hitting from behind. Draw automatic 10 minute misconducts. So you, in home, when you get a misconduct, when you go to the box, you know why you got the misconduct. That's a play that happens in the game, and it's so sudden. Right. You know, Rahimi's sitting there, and now he's... He missed 12 minutes of the game. And he just, you just sit there. At least, at least the other way, you can beat yourself up a little bit and say, yeah, that was a pretty stupid thing to say. And it was usually something you said. Oh, almost, almost certainly. Here's a chance now for Austria on the power play. 0 for 2 in their first game, 0 for 1 in the first period. They had a couple of chances, more longer range shots. Eber looks up to center ice. That's picked off by Matthias Eckholm and he fires it back down to the Austrian zone. Just after 1 o'clock in the afternoon here in Prague on a beautiful warm day. The first of three games we played here today. Canada and Germany coming up next. Plus ball, backhands that hard out of the zone. And Heinrich plays it across with Palestrang. Alex Palestrang got bottled up. Heinrich tries the other side. Emmanuel Latusta, he fires it wide. Ekman Larson smoothly plays that for Jimmy Erickson. And up comes Sweet and shorthanded. Erickson pokes that across, knocked away from Oscar Moeller. And Heinrich races back to it. Up ahead to Latusa. And across the line, Latusa drops it off, and there's a quick shot by Thomas Ruffel. And that's stopped by Andres Nilsson, his first save in some time. Nice breakout. The Austrians aided by uh, catching the Swedes a little bit halfway through a chain. And you can see the stop by Anders Nilsson. He makes it moving right to left, catches the puck in his body, and then slides outside the crease. You can see where the problems are for Nilsson, and that's a, a long side shot. As he slides across the net, it's going to be exposed to either getting beat on the long side or leaving a rebound in a wide open net. And that would be more of a problem in a North American game in a North American rink where the puck comes more quickly than it would be here. Leopard call offside at the Swedish line. 22 seconds in the penalty to Daniel Rahimi remain. Palestrang played 26 minutes yesterday in the win against the Swiss. And of the many challenges when you're outmanned a bit is that your best players play a lot. And when you have a back-to-back -back night, it's tough to rustle up the legs again. Austria plays France on Tuesday. And a game they'll have circle on the calendars against Germany a week from Monday. That's their second last game of the opening round. But they can play with France. And but that's going to be a big game for France. No points yesterday for them after the loss to Germany. Yeah, they left. You got to think in a 1 1 game with a minute to go, you've got to get one at least. Michael Raffle centers it. A quick shot there taken by Lebler. Turned away by Nilsson. And now the penalty is over. And the misconduct begins. Schumnick fired that wide of the goal. Four and a half gone here in the second period. Sweden with a 3-0 lead thanks to three goals in just over five minutes near the end of the first period. Philip Forsberg has one of those goals, loose behind it, and try to chip it back in front for Louis Erickson. Also had an, uh, an assist and three shots. Really good first period for Forsberg. Left off long shot, knocked away by Sveta. Geyer lifts it back out to center ice. All over Ekman Larson comes in. Ekman Larson swoops in behind the Austrian goal. Still with it. Drops it back down to Lundquist for Erickson. And Louis Erickson couldn't quite reach that. Now back at the point. Cut bomb a shot. Broke his stick and now centered there by Louis Erickson. Forsberg was all alone in front. The pass just missed. Now Forsberg got bottled up and plays it back to Ekman Larson. Works around the broken stick and three Austrian defenders. And Schoberg centers that. Now Josefsson down to Lundqvist looking for Schoberg. And a 
Davis lifted way up in the air by right, Martin Schumnick for Austria and back down to the Swedish zone. In comes Josephson now along with Sjogren. The centering pass and Sjogren tipped that wide. Klingberg, oh, he got buried there at the line by Mario Fisher. And now the centering pass, fired right on goal by Jimmy Erickson, turned away by Sveta. Austria has trouble from below the goal line. They've lost three or four really good chances to the Swedes in front of the net. Sjogren. Feeds it back for Jimmy Erickson, knocked over by Fisher. A couple good hits for him on this shift. Yeah, Stefan Cromwell goes back. Gets ahead of Yalmerson. And he finds Elias Lindholm. Lindholm winds his way in, spins back in the corner. Feeds it back in the long shot taken there by Jonas Anilov, goes wide. Now Matthias Echo. Throws it down in the corner, the centering pass misfired from Lindholm. Back at the point, Ekholm a drive with a pad save made by Sveta. And the Austrians hemmed in here for the last few minutes. Throw it back to center ice, Latusa couldn't reach it. Lead pass goes to Lindholm. Run away from him by Patrick Petter, but now fed back. Nalmerson leaves it there, Ekholm shoots! And Sveta hangs on to that. 3 nothing sweep leads here in the second period. Day three of the 2015 World Championship here in Prague. Later on today, Canada faces Germany here. France will play Switzerland tonight. Tomorrow, Canada against the host Czech Republic. A lot of people here thrilled for the opportunity to watch Sidney Crosby live. Tickets jumped as soon as Crosby agreed to play in the tournament. Now Muller with a chance, shoots, and Smetta hangs on to that, so the... And there's a carnival in here anyway if the Czechs are playing, so it'll be wild in here. Scoring chance for Oscar Muller. Two years for Chilliwack in the Western Hockey League. Drafted by the LA Kings. Ekman Larson. Down to Lindstrom with a sharp angle shot. Sveta makes the save with the rebound. Bounces to Latusa. Manuel Latusa works it across the line. Centers it. And the puck got down to the Swedish crease. Finally cleared away by Moeller. Moeller won a pair of Swedish Elite League titles with Sheleftio in 2013 and 2014. Sheleftio has become a powerhouse in the Swedish Hockey League. Making three consecutive appearances in the Swedish League Championship Series. Roffel in front on the feed from Dominique Heinrich all alone he tapped it wide well, they're not going to get a better chance than that in comes Thomas Roffel again this time he tangles with cleft bomb and it was one of the players you'd like to have the chance 26 goals in the Austrian league for Thomas Roffel this year now a lead pass goes to Louis Erickson Lander stays onside Forsberg works in the back hand shot scores Philip Forsberg He's got two, and Sweden leads four to nothing. Turns out to be a bad goal through the legs of Brenny Svete in the, in the Austrian goal. But Philip Forsberg again with some really good hands. Here's the missed chance from Thomas Raffle right in front of the net. He cues it wide. And then the breakout comes quickly, and nice little drop pass from Louis Erickson to Philip Forsberg. Forsberg drags it into the middle of the ice around Schumnig, and then the backhander squeaks through the legs of Schwetze, and it's a three-point afternoon for Philip Forsberg. Talked a bit up, up, up the top of the show about the importance of the two players added from Nashville this week. Forsberg and Ekholm. Now Sjogren across the line. Trying to play it across. Josephson in, shoots at the side of the goal. Jakob Josephson with a good chance. Held at the line by Klingberg. And Lundqvist plays that down to Josephson. Josephson back with it. 
Klingberg fires, and Spetta made the save as that rocket was blocked by his shoulder. Now Klingberg back with it. Flips it back to Yosis, and his long wrist shot hit his skate and bounced away. And Levler brings it back the other way for Austria. The pass is picked up, and in comes Elias Lindholm with it. Lindholm works back in front and scores! What a goal by Elias Lindholm, and now it's 5 nothing sweet. This is a gorgeous move by Lindholm. 17 goals for Carolina this past year, the 13th, the fifth pick rather of the 2013 draft by the Hurricanes. He takes the turnover from Leffler in the middle of the ice and he is gone. There's no way the Austrians are going to be able to catch him. They were going back for a change. And Lindholm takes the puck, makes a nifty move between the stick into the triangle area that you can't defend the header. Pavel Datsuk does this so well in Detroit. He's done it for years. It's a really, really tough way to defend as you, you can't move your stick quick enough. But Lindholm, a beautiful move, and it's 5-0. Those goals 51 seconds apart. We got a, a couple 41 seconds apart in the first. Now a pair 51 seconds apart here in the second. And the first real... I suppose a Canada Latvia game would be a 6-1 game, but the first real one-sided game we've seen early in this competition. And Austria coming off an emotional win over Switzerland yesterday. You said two windows of scoring, and Sweden blows it open. See, Anne had that knocked away. We're past the midway point now, the second period. Analog looks ahead. Sweden plays Latvia tomorrow. They'll play Canada on Wednesday. That call. Up for Yalmerson. And the large Latvian, or rather Austrian contingent has gone quiet here this afternoon. Now Rodgers centers it and they come and it's fired high and wide by Geyer. A couple of Swedes collided in the middle of the ice. Austria's had two unbelievable chances this period, missed the net on both of them. And look out, here comes Forsberg, negates the icy call, and wins the battle for the puck in the corner, then hammers down Alex Palastrag. This has been a one-man show for Forsberg here in the second period. Ekman Larson back with it. Tap back by Lander, jumping in his Forsberg. Here he comes, scores! Patrick Philip Forsberg. What a game he's having, and it's just half over. Gordon, I would say the one thing that maybe caught me a little bit of, by surprise is the finishing ability of Forsberg. I didn't know that he was going to be as elite a finisher as he appears to be. This again is a short turnover. Oliver Ekman Larson on the 360 view spins that up the middle of the ice to Forsberg. He shows great strength. And then this is a beautiful finish. Forsberg's got three goals and one assist. That's going to be enough for Rene Sveta in the Austrian goal. So Bernhard Starkbaum will come in. He played a terrific game yesterday with 34 stops against the Swiss. But the story this afternoon in the first half of this game is Philip Forsberg and the Nashville Predators with three goals and one assist. So Dan Ratushny calls his timeout. Oliver Ekman Larson's got a couple assists in this period. Louis Erickson's got a couple assists and a, a three goals and one assist for Philip Forsberg. So for Rene Sveta, two appearances in the World Championship for Austria. He's allowed nine goals on 31 shots and has not finished either game.
This was a tough assignment today. <laughs> well, obviously, when you're in Austria's position, Dan Bertucci's going to save Starkbomb as better goaltender. Or for the games they've got to win against the likes of Germany. As that centering pass from Ruby Eriksson misses. The Germans, Latvia, Switzerland. And he got a close-up look at a budding National Hockey League superstar on Philip Forsberg. And to go with Stark Bomb now, for the Tuesday's okay, they've got a day off tomorrow. But just over halfway through, it's six nothing sweet. Now Klingberg for Molro taps it back, held at the line by Jokob Lindstrom. Feeds across to Cronwall, drops it back to Lindstrom who shoots. That's blocked, but as it is, a crease violation is called against the Swedes who lead 6-0 here in the second. Seven fifty-seven to go here in the second period. Sweden has exploded for six goals in the first half of this game. You know, Gord, when you you look at this tournament, I didn't realize it. I don't think until I played in it. Is that you know you look across at your opponent and you you know that you're probably overmatching them in a lot of cases, but then you realize when you play against them how much this tournament means to those players. Like. Rene Zvetta didn't have a great afternoon. He didn't have a lot of fun. This means a lot to Austria to play in this tournament. And when you play against these guys, and they go to hit you, you realize in a hurry, man, they're, they're playing this as hard as they can. And these Austrian players are going to get a chance to play against Sidney Crosby and Yarmir Yager, some of the greatest players of the generation. And they'll tell their grandkids about that. It's a, it's a wonderful opportunity for them to play, but just because they get you know, booted in the shins here this afternoon doesn't mean it's any less important to them. There's Victor Rath, drops it back, and it's fired wide by Analog. He needs to go to Philip Forsberg's finishing school. Sometimes you can go to the best finishing school and it might not happen. You can hand somebody only so many tools, you know. <laughs> Knocked away from Michael Raffel. So if you're wondering, with three goals halfway through the game, does Forsberg have a shot at the record for most goals in the game? No. What is it? Well, pre-1974, Alexander Martinez, the most recent, there's a chance now for the Austrians. In and a backhand shot, another break for the Austrians. Mario Fisher turned away, and then Fisher got dumped in the corner. And that's going to be a penalty, I believe, against Victor Rask. Go off for interference. There's been no shortage of Austrian chances. This is a bit of a careless play through the middle of the ice. There's no penalty call there. The penalty's going to be here when the puck's long gone and Rask probably a little disappointed in, in himself with the turnover when he takes an interference penalty. So prior to 1974, this old open era of the World Championship, 12 was the record for goals in the game back in 1947. But since 1977, so-called open era, four goals in the game is the record. It's been done nine times. I want to say Andrew McBain shot one of those. He does. He needs pull. Yes, he does. Oh. And now another call here in the... Latvian zone, a tripping call, or Austrian zone rather, a tripping call. And Rahimi's just had his 10th misconduct in. He comes back on. But the penalty will go against Austria's Alex Palestrang. When Rahimi went into the penalty box, it was a quite a different game than it is now. 3-0 when he went in, 6-0 when he went out. Here's the, the tripping penalty right here on Palestrang as he pulls down Sjogren and the Austrian power play disappears in 19 seconds. And up comes Forsberg. Of the nine guys who have done it, scored four goals in the game, you've heard of Alexander Yakushev, Sergei Makarov, Thomas Dean, Andrew McBain, Boislav Eberman might not be high on your list of people you would have guessed, Marcus Kuhl of Germany, Yuri Lala of the Czech Republic, and Ulrich Valak against Poland. Poland's on the receiving end of a number of these 
Record scores. In comes Cromwell with it. And now Cromwell feeds it back, and there's a quick shot whistle wide by Erickson. And Andrew McBean's a good pull by you. I was on the ice for a few of them. <laughs> that was cheating. Erickson feeds it across. Oh, what a stop by Starkbomb. In tight on Klingberg. Back comes Michael Raffle with it. Four on four here. For another minute with five and a half to go in the period. And here comes Forsberg with it. Philip Forsberg almost got by the third man. And Starkbaum plays it away. You mentioned Starkbaum was terrific in that game against Switzerland yesterday, keeping his team in it when they trailed three different times. The Swiss had great chances in the late stages. Starkbaum turned them away, and then with a minute to go, the Austrians tied the game. Now work back, and Oscar Bowler with a sharp angle shot. Scooped up by Geyer, he swings it rink wide to Raphael Rotter. Rotter taken down to the corner by Rahimi. Geyer. Tried to play it back. That's hooked up by Lindstrom, who takes the return pass from Moeller. Joachim Lindstrom with Sweden needing a change, doesn't get the puck deep. And Mitterdorfer plays that to the line now, helped out by Wilstein. Sweden now the power play briefly as the penalty to Palestrang has 15 seconds to go. And Rahimi drops it back for Analog. Thomas Analov, a third round pick of Phoenix back in 06, shovels it back in front of Trickling Puck, and Starkbaum is able to kick that away. <laughs> Matthias Ekholm holds the line now for Sweden. Ekholm winds his way in, still with it. A complete circuit of the offensive zone there, finds Simon Yalmers, and his pass just missed for Lindholm. And he got an Austrian defender on a stick. But it's lifted out by Palestrang. We're back to five on five here with three and a half to go in the second period. Eckholm snaps the pass ahead for Josephson. It bounced off his stick. And Stark Bob will hang on to that. Klingberg on the doorstep on the receiving end of a beautiful feed, and that's a great stop by Stark. Stark Bob as he moves left to right and flares the right pad out. Klingberg wastes no time to get the puck to the net. And then a real nice rush moments later by Analog. And Starkbaum able to corral that as well. Joseph centers it. Lundquist chips that back in the corner. Shogren battles forward as well. Shots are 13 to 4 Sweden here in the period 26 11 overall. The Austrians had their chances in the early going. They actually had the edge in play, but it's been all Sweden since. Lundquist works in. Drops it back to Puff Bob. Yostas in, and Stark Bob makes the pad save on him. Stark Bob plays for Brinas Yabla in the Swedish Hockey League. And a 9.22 save percentage in that league this year, one of the best. See percentage marks in the Swedish League. Now Forsberg back out there, flips it back in the corner. Rotter. Plays it across for Ketter. And Patrick Ketter back up to center ice. Kicked ahead by Cronwall. Erickson trying to hook it back for Forsberg. Here's Cronwall. To Lander, he's got Louis Erickson with him. In comes Louis Erickson. It's poked by Starkbaum. At the other end, Wilson came out to play it. And there's Cronwall. Another chip pass ahead. In comes Louis Erickson again. He's got Forsberg in foot. Forsberg tapped it wide. Almost goal number four for Forsberg. Here's Stefan Cronwall steps in. He shoots. And Starkbaum gets a piece of that. 145 to go in the period. Louis Erickson could have three points on that shift. <laughs> Here comes Cronwall in. No soup for you. Nothing for him. 
Erickson is knocked away by Lebler. Now stolen by Lindstrom. Joachim Lindstrom. Lebler's lost his stick. There's Muller with a shot. And Starkball makes the save on him. Back goes to Rask with a drive that was blocked. At the point is Rahimi. His long wrist shot goes wide. The only reason the Swedes aren't scoring more now is their arms are getting tired. The Austrians look exhausted. They can't even skate anymore. Look at them standing in the corner. Now loose in front is Rask, and he misfired on that. Played the beauty game yesterday here. That Hugo win over Switzerland. Here they come again are the Swedes. Lindstrom centers at the pass, just missed Yalmerson. Thomas Raffle. Get on analog. Centers it in that pass. Went off a skate as Latusi was standing alone in front. Kept alive by Goldsteep. 25 seconds to go in the period. Thomas Raffle. Works a backhand shot in front. That's kicked away by Anilov, who's lost his stick. And now Victor Rask ahead for Lindstrom. Anilov hustling back in the final seconds of this period. It crunches Komarek, who's past the flex wide. And Sweden takes a 6 0 lead into the dressing room after the second period here at the 2015 World Hockey Championship in Prague. Sweden taking to the ice for the third period here with a 6 0 lead on Austria. And Philip Forsberg is a goal away from tying the modern day world championship record for goals in a game. But Bernard Starkbaum comes off the bench for Austria and has not allowed a goal so far in the hockey game. Made some pretty good stops uh, when he came in. Anders Nilsson made a couple good stops early and then got helped in the second period. Is the best chances Austria had, they missed the net on, and though he did make a good stop on the breakaway to Fisher. And away we go in the third period. Down is Palestrang. And we got a penalty here in the opening second. The high sticking call. And it's going against Austria. The Austrians were confused by that call. It was Palestrang, the man who was knocked down, who got called. Oh, as, as he falls down, he's got both hands on his stick and he hits Oscar Bowler across the the side of the helmet. Dan Rattusny probably not too thrilled with that as it's already hard enough and 14 seconds into period three. They're shorthanded again and Philip Forsberg is on the ice. Cronwall to Forsberg through the middle. Look out. Trainer on the Austrian bench almost got nailed there on the right end of the bench. That's a dangerous one that comes flying across the ice. There's Forsberg who's had a terrific afternoon. His first goal was a thing of beauty. He stole the puck with a good defensive play coming back on the puck. Kept the puck in the zone. Nice little flip to himself and rocket over the shoulder of the Austrian starter, Rene Sveta. It's been 21 years since the player scored four goals in a World Championship game. That was Magnus Svensson for Sweden. Ekholm. Drops it off to Lander. Forsberg circling the high slot. Lander finds Ekholm. Back to Lander. Forsberg shoots. Starkbaum makes the stop. Eriksson in tight. He's turned away as well. Here's Ekholm with it. Across to Lander. So you get a sense of how different Austria was with Stark bombing goal yesterday against Switzerland. Here's Forsberg, shoots, that's blocked, gets it back, can't get a shot away. Lander with it. Anton Lander drops it down. 
Here comes Forsberg again. Fires, and it's off a leg. Forsberg gonna, back with it. He's going to have sore arms here. It's three shots in about 20 seconds. Now a hand pass is called. Only one of them got through to, to Starkbomb. So seven shots on goal for Forsberg now. Yesterday, Jakub Voracek had 10 for the checks against Latvia. Sometimes you can go two weeks and not get 10 shots. 45 seconds to go in the penalty to Austria. And Klingberg with it now. John Klingberg. Drops it up to Ekman Larsen. Oliver Ekman Larsen. Back to Klingberg. Works it across. And Elias Lindholm with a centering pass. Just missed Victor Rast. Yalmerson. That bump there by Komarek. And now it's chopped down the ice by Manuel Geyer. Ten seconds to go on the penalty. Rask plays it across to Lindholm. He's got a beautiful goal in this game. Scored in the second period. Knocked away from Ekman Larson. And that'll do it for the penalties in Alex Palestrang. So Austria will have to reload after this game, play France on Tuesday. That's a critical game for the Austrians. I mentioned the French left points on the table in that late loss to Germany yesterday. Here's Rahimi with it now. Shoots trying to find a stick. And Lundquist just missed on that. You talked about it earlier, Ray, that Austria has been in the revolving door of this tournament for the last 10 years. Relegated to each of their last five appearances then promoted the next year. It'd be nice to break the cycle a little bit for them. Some pretty good physical play. Jakob Josephson running a couple of times into Michael Roffel. They, of course, would play against each other a lot. Josephson in New Jersey and Roffel in Philadelphia three times on that last shift. They turned into battering rams trying to knock each other over. And of course, Austria's two best players are not available. Thomas Vanix in the playoffs with Minnesota. Michael Grabner of the Islanders is injured again and apparently facing surgery yet again for New York. Centering pass to Ekman Larson spins it around and he's trying to find Jimmy Erickson with that pass. And falls in the corner. Feeds it down to Moeller. In the corner for Ekman Larson. Erickson fighting for space in front. Oscar Kluffbaum with it. He's got a goal tonight as well. Or this afternoon, I should say. It's just after 2 o'clock local time here in Prague. And walking is Ekman Larson who fired that high. Finally, Austria plays it out as Petter gets it away. In comes Joachim Lindstrom now for Sweden, trying to pull it back in front. And Kleffbaum holds the line for the Swedes. Rossi goes to Louis Eriksson, and Eriksson drops it off for Staffan Cronwall. The captain spins back, and off the bench comes Forsberg, works in front, waits, and that shot got blocked, and now the rebound hammered wide by Klingberg. Austria is exhausted. And Forsberg, they can't even move anymore. Sweden gets to every loose puck. The puck's just been in this end of the ice for the first five minutes. Run up by Latusa with a long shot, knocked away by Nilsson. Now spinning and shooting, Manuel Geyer. And the save made by Anders Nilsson. Been a terrific afternoon for Forsberg. There's that first goal. I love that patience and poise to keep the puck alive. A great shot. Here's a dangle and a weak one that goes through the legs of Sveta. And that's the one that ended the night. As he takes a pretty good bump on the bench from Elias Lindholm after his third one. It was a beauty. Three goals and one assist. Schumann had it knocked away. Lindholm looks ahead for Yalmerson. One thing that's really impressive about the Swedes and their development as, as a hockey nation is that as their terrific older players like Cronball and, and 
and Zetterberg get a little bit older. They've got this next generation of young guys coming. And there's one of them, Elias Lindholm, who got hooked in front. As Martin should make got a stick on him, and so Sweden's going to the power play. So we saw Forsberg and, and Eli Elias Lindholm, Victor Rath. Now you got Oliver Ekman Larson and Klingberg and uh, left bomb on the blue line. It, it, they've really turned the page nicely into this developing group of young players. Yeah, William Nylander was a first round pick of Toronto's in that mix. Savannah Jad would be there yeah. too. Uh, Jacob Della Rose in Montreal. This is an endless list of... And, and the funny thing is, you take that for granted, it wasn't like that 15 years ago. And that's just hard. That's really hard to believe, I think. Now we're used to this again. The one place is a goal that has become a little bit of a quiet spot behind the 33 year old Henry Lundqvist. Jonas Enroth is the starter. Well, Frederick Anderson's a Dane. He played in Sweden, but they have not turned out a lot of high-end goaltenders as Ekholm walks in and fires, and it's off the stick of Stark Bomb up and out of play. Pretty nifty move by Ekholm. Seven goals with Nashville this year, and makes a nice little walk to the middle of the ice around Kamarik. And off the shaft of the stick, a Stark bomb. He's going down. <laughs> hate that. Shooters hate that. Because it's by the goalie. It's just. Well, no, it's not. It's by the goalie. He didn't. Trust me, there's no goalie using that in an attempt to stop anything. <laughs> it bugs you now. It does. Broadwell plays it back to Ekholm. Oh, I'd make some rule changes to the goalie equipment, let me tell you. <laughs> Would they use putters now? <laughs> yes, pretty much. Broadwell feeds across the lander. The Goalies goalie's union would sue me, but oh. I would have a few equipment changes. Oh, they'd, refuse, you. they'd refuse to play. They would, they would boycott the game if you were in charge. Here's Lander with it. Tries to center it. That goes wide. A minute to go in the power play. And that hope holds the line again for the Swedes. You're right, the Austrians aren't winning any races now. Forsberg. Circling in the slot, Lander feeds across. Here comes Forsberg. He one time that shot, but fanned on it. And Forsberg back with it, got shoved off the puck there by Fisher. You think about two years ago, a guy like Michael Raffle was 24 years old, playing for his country in the World Championship for the first time. All of a sudden, the scout for the Philadelphia Flyers calls the hotel and said, we'd like to talk to you. I just play in the NHL. Lindstrom walks in and shoots. Pad save by Starkbaum. He's been there the last two years and scored 21 goals in the league this year. So who is the next? Michael Roffel. In comes Klingberg with a shot. Starkbaum kicks that away. And again, Starkbaum has not allowed a goal since coming on to replace him. Rene Sveta. I mean, St. Louis did it with Yori Lettera. Yep. Who really had good chemistry with Vladimir Tarasenko. They had played together in the KHL, and Lettera had a good first season in St. Louis. Some don't work. Some try. The players you're getting are going to be older. It's like a free draft pick that you don't have to waste the pick on. Edmonton tried it with Anton Belov, the defenseman a couple of years ago. He's in this tournament again, playing for, for Russia. Now Yosef's up with a shot that goes wide. And the ice has been tilted this way for most of this period. Now, back comes Lepler, his stick broke on him as he got in. Now Sweden will make wholesale changes with eight and a half gone here in the period. Lindholm reaching for it. And it's scooped up by Manuel Geyer now for Austria. Look out at center ice as Rotter got steamrolled there by Rahimi. The much bigger Rahimi. Rotter weighs about 174 pounds, maybe. Rahimi 209. Rahimi hit Yaga really hard in the in the opening period of their game, and then Yager walked them later in the game.
Peter Dorfer. Out to Rodder at center ice. Back home for Forsberg. It comes Philip Forsberg now loose in the corner. The Austrians are changing. Lander drops it back for Ekman Larson, who holds the line now for Sweden. Forsberg just cruising in the high slot now. You gotta think the Swedes are gonna try to get him for a penalty coming now to Austria. Forsberg works his way in. Spins back as the extra skater Moeller comes on. Forsberg drops it off for Kleffbaum. Kleffbaum into the corner. Fed back to Lander. He shoots. And Moeller tipped that wide. And Austria still can't gain possession. Kleffbaum. Centers it. Moeller. Dreckman Larson. In comes Moller. He fans on the shot. Kleffbaum waits. He shoots. And finally the Austrians touch up. And with 9.31 to go here in the third period, Sweet is going back on the power play. I have a... Patrick Penner goes off for Austria. And Sweden with a 6-0 lead before the power play here in the third period. The Swedes won't let up here. They've got Ekman Larson out the back end. And four forwards. Oh, Barbie Klingberg is out there as well. Same thing. <laughs> These guys aren't going to stand at the blue line. We talked about it in the first first period about the Swedish power play, how I think the real danger is going to be trying to get a hold of Ekman Larsson and Klingberg as they just wander around the offensive zone. Jokob Lindstrom works his way in. Lindstrom dribbles that down on goal and Starkbaum hangs on to that. So in North America, there's more of a tradition, or you want to call it that, of late and blowout games you ease off you, you put your third and fourth line out the power play you don't play your star players as much for a long time in europe you just played hard to the end of the game your, your best players played and you got real lopsided scores I, I don't know when the game's in hand it's i don't know at some point do you, do you really need to to lay it on any thicker and I, the other thing you got to be careful of is Guys start to cheat a lot in the lopsided score. Ekman Larson in, shoots, start bomb the save, oh. and he stopped that as well. Jimmy Aronson was in front, and I'll tell you what, Bernard Starkbaum in a 6 nothing game has not allowed to sweep. Watch this effort. Here's a good shot by Lar Ekman Larson, and Erickson's there for the rebound. He gets good wood on it, but Starkman doesn't give up on the play. Erickson just shoves his way into the front of the net, and this hits the right arm of Starkman. We'll get a good look at it here, and it's underneath his back to make the stop. I was mentioning, Gord, guys start to cheat and take shortcuts. The problem is you fall asleep a little bit when you're way ahead. You can get rattled by somebody that's not having a very good day on the other side. A famous example of that in the Stanley Cup playoffs years ago was Ron Francis getting nailed by Scott Stevens late in a blowout game. Now, it was New Jersey blowing out Carolina. And Stevens' thing was, I play from whistle to whistle. There's about four seconds left in that game when Stevens KO'd him. He might have been the only guy that I know that would have hit Francis like that at that time. Man, did he ever get him. Forsberg centers that puck. 40 seconds to go in the Swedish power play. Now, the other factor to consider in international hockey, too, is that goal difference, they've changed it somewhat over the years, is one of the deciding factors. Now, it's, it's now like the fifth or sixth. The goal difference does matter. For the most part, it's goal difference between the tied teams. And unlikely that Sweden and Austria will wind up tied in the standings here, but it could happen. So with that ingrained for so many years in the culture, you just keep scoring. Well, the Swedes are trying. But Starkbaum has been terrific in goal. Not like they haven't had any chances here. Penner is back on the ice. And a centering pass from Victor Rask misses. 
the line, held by Ekman Larson. Elias Lindholm with it. Has a look in front for Rask. That's batted away. And Rask back on it. Cleft bomb to Ekman Larson. Shoots it, goes off a of skate and wide. Martin Shubnik centers it. And Puck almost bounced the wrong direction. And now brought back. In comes Latusa for Austria. Komarek on the loose puck. Spins away from Ekman Larson. Centers it. Heinrich in. Shoot score! Dominique Heinrich gets one for Austria with 6.43 to go. Well, after almost nothing at that end of the ice for the first 13 minutes of the period, Dominique Heinrich, who had 10 goals in Salzburg on the, on the way to the championship this year, comes in from the point, takes the pass in the higher slot, a real good feed from below the goal line. Elias Lindholm gets tied up. With Raffle in the slot, he can't get out there, and the Austrians have something to celebrate. Well, you've traveled all this way, you might as well see a goal, right? <laughs> Alistrain goes back for it. So the score with Starkbaum in the net is 1-0 Austria. Well, that was pretty much the same deal again with Canada and Latvia. Yeah, true, Vesalskis came in. It was 5-0. It was 1-0 it was Latvia for the longest time until Crosby scored. On the penalty, On shot, the penalty shot with 20 seconds left. Now Bowler rolls that line. Palestrang plays it out. And fired in now by Rotter. Five and a half to go in the period. And Rotter back with it. The line to Hooker foot. He couldn't hang on to it. Being trailed there by Moeller. Comes Yalmerson. Tries to center it. Rotter picks it up. Sweden's changing. Rotter needs to change too. Slides it across to Eber. And Florian Eber spins back. Under five to go in the third period. And Yalmerson. Up for Lindholm. It's amazing to think about this tournament now. It's 6-1 Sweden in the third period. Guys are laughing on the bench, enjoying themselves. The medal round's not far away, and you're going to see Russia, Finland, the top teams in this tournament. How about the Russians? They had an early lead against Slovenia. Yeah. It ends up 5-3. Yeah. Andrzej Kopitar playing for Slovenia for his dad. He said, hard to say no. He, you know, he, he does why he plays. Hard to say no to your dad. He might not have been asked. Dad might have said, you got to come. Still going in the third period in that one. That's a team from Slovenia in the Austrian League. They've got a team from the Czech Republic as well. A team from Hungary. One from Italy, I believe. The Bolzano, yeah, is in that league. Forsberg comes across to Klingberg. Back to Cronwall. Stefan Cronwall shoots. And Austrian hockey has dramatically overtaken Italy in terms of the strength of the league and the strength of players. There was a time when that Italian league was a really strong league. Now, lots of players. Gary Curry played in that league at the end of his career. Lots of North American pros would go play in Italy. The Italians were mainstays at the World Championship and the Olympic level, but Italian hockey has fallen off dramatically in recent years. Forsberg centers it, chipped on goal by Lundqvist, knocked away again by Starkbaugh. 
And I'll ask your question again from the Latvia game. Can a guy be the player of the game when he only plays half the game? And now Heinrich is knocked down. And Austria will go to the power play when we come back to Prague. Philip Forsberg called for a trip here in the third period, so Austria gets a late power play down 6-1. to one. Still to come today, Canada against Germany at 10.15 a.m. Eastern Time is the face-off. And tonight, France plays Switzerland here. The Swiss still smarting from that loss to Austria yesterday when they had the lead with a minute to go. You know, another penalty came out to Sweden, or is it? No, no it's not. It's, this it's is the go. second time today that Austria has been on a power play. The first time they lost the penalty, the power play in 19 seconds, this time 14 seconds. And Herberger gets called for the high stick. So we welcome those of you who watched Russia and Slovenia, who played a game that might have been closer than most people thought. 5-3 Russian win. Here it's six to one in Sweden. Austria scored a late goal in the third period to get on the board. And now it's four on four in the late stages. But the story here is that Bernard Starkbaum, the Austrian goaltender, came on to relief, has not allowed a goal to Sweden since coming into the second period. Starkbaum was terrific for the Austrians yesterday in a shootout win over Switzerland. Lever shoots from a sharp angle. Nilsson makes the stop. The rebound trickled away from him. And now Moeller back for it. Both these teams, Austria and Sweden, tied their first games with a minute to go or less in the third period, then won in a shootout. Sweden against the Czech Republic, Austria against Switzerland. Klaffbaum was one of the Swedish goals and almost had his pocket picked there by Komarak would have been in a low. Now Ekholm feeds across to Jimmy Erickson. Philip Forsberg has three goals in this game. He had three almost at the midway point in the second period. The modern day record in the world championship for goals in a game is four. Got nine times. Palestrang. Looks ahead to Thomas Raffle. In comes Raffle across the line. He gets bumped off the puck and it's poked ticked away by Anders Nilsson. A minute and a half to go. Here in the third period. Lead pass goes to Lindstrom. Joachim Lindstrom drops it off to Ekholm. Trying to feed it back to Lindstrom. And now Forsberg is back out for the Swede. So it's a short power play for Sweden. Forsberg had the puck skip away from him. Forsberg in the corner with it. And the power play is over. Five on five. As we've now got one minute left in the third period. Hard to tell who's winning here based on the crowd reaction. Both the Swedish and Austrian fans are up and clapping. Now a centering pass by Raz. Just missed Forsberg. And Herberger has it back for Austria. Drops it off. Geyer in. His poke check there by Kleffbaum. And Louis Erickson winds his way in. Drops it back. And that shot hammered wide by Rahimi. Moved up by Geyer. To Petrick. His pass was off a stick. Made back in by Eber. From the point. There's a shot by Fisher. Stop. Rebound. And Raphael Rotter turned away by Anders Nilsson. Nice little sequence for, for Nilsson as he coughed up the big rebound but then stays right with the loose puck. And Rotter tries to go back between his legs. Nilsson stops that too. He had a shutout going until later in the third period when Heinrich scored. For Austria, the Swedes just 10 seconds away from going to 
five points on the tournament. Final seconds now of the third period. So Sweden's got two points for its opening win in the shooter against the Czech Republic. And the Swedes have got three here with a 6-1 win over Austria. But of note, Bernard Starkbaum in goal for Austria did not allow a goal. It's coming on in relief. 17 shots, 17 saves for Starkbaum. But the real story of the game is Philip Forsberg's three goals and one assist. And the Swedes pick up an important three points. Sweden will play Latvia next on Monday for Austria. A day off tomorrow, they'll play France on Tuesday. The 2015 IIHF World Hockey Championship from Prague and Ostrava, Czech Republic is brought